adapted from Mexican novelist Juan Pablo Villalobos 2020 novel by the same name and directed by Fernando Frias I don't expect anyone to believe me starring Dario Yesbeck Bernal and Natalia Solian in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix as the dark comedy thriller releases on the streaming platform we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview talk about the ending and discuss some details of the film so that you can have the best viewing experience A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the movie. But if you are done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you. And let's move on to the basic plot. The film focuses on the life of a young man named Juan Pablo and begins with an unusual opening scene showing the inside of a public dustbin. Some printed files inside a brown cover are then discovered in the trash by a sanitation worker emptying the container the next morning. When the manuscript fell to the ground, a homeless man picked it up to find something interesting. As he begins to read the contents of this manuscript, he learns about the author who wrote about his own life experiences through strange twists and turns. The homeless man read only a few pages and threw them because the manuscript was useless to him. Then the events recorded in that manuscript are revealed to us in this strange but wonderful film where we become part of the life of Juan Pablo. From childhood, Juan was different from his cousin Lorenzo. Lorenzo was more interested in making money through business and the teenage pleasures of watching adult movies, while Juan was more interested in the finer things in life. In the early 2000s, Juan decided to pursue higher education and was selected for a PhD program at Pompeu University in Barcelona. This is a happy event for both the young man and his girlfriend Valentina who dreams of moving to Europe and living there. At a farewell party hosted by his parents, Juan received a call from his cousin Lorenzo. He is very excited about his latest business project which will bring him a lot of money. Juan knows that Lorenzo's plans always involve asking for money for investments, so he tries to avoid meeting his cousin. However, the next day a young man arrests Juan for meeting Lorenzo and indirectly threatens him with a gun hidden under his shirt. When they arrived at their destination, Juan was shocked to find Lorenzo tied to a chair and surrounded by people who claimed that his cousin had borrowed some money and lost most of it. Chucky, the leader of this gang, receives orders from someone and immediately shoots Lorenzo. Juan then receives a call from a man who claims to be the lawyer, and Juan must follow the strange orders of this mysterious man. The first and most important order the lawyer gave to Juan Pablo was that he and Vale go to Barcelona as planned without any changes. Juan's family was shocked when young Lorenzo was found dead, but it was reported that his death was the result of a truck accident. Before leaving the country, the protagonist has an unfortunate misunderstanding after breaking up with Vale, which is typical of the young and restless love of this era. But the gang that took over his life immediately reminds him that Vale is essential to their plans for him. The fact that Juan's plane is stopped to drag him and get a call from Chucky makes it clear that the gangster is very powerful and influential. If previous events have ended at one, this will force him to follow the gang's orders. So the young man reconciles with Vale and takes her to Barcelona. In the new city, Juan begins to study and discuss his thesis with his guides and colleagues. His thesis and research are roughly about measuring the limits of comedy, how much can be considered comedy, and how much can become too serious and offensive. It's interesting that the movie was built around this question as well. because the events in Juan's life are somehow comical and at the same time very tragic and sad. The first order received from the lawyer is to change the guide of the study and Juan submits a formal request to change it to Professor Meritzel Ripoll. Although the request was immediately approved, this change was particularly surprising in the context of Juan's research because his studies of humor and history do not include gender studies, which are Ripoll's specialty. However, the lawyer states that this change will lead to one meeting a very special student in Professor Ripoll's class who is closely connected to the next part of the plan. The student is a young woman named Leia Carbonell who has strong feminist beliefs that immediately clash with Juan's ideas. Although the two begin awkwardly, Juan and Leia become friends through arguments that only highlight their differences. This is helped somewhat by Juan's psychological state. When Juan is too nervous or anxious, he develops eczema on his hands and feet, which acts as a conversation starter. But when he discovers the next part of the lawyer's plan or the next step Juan must take, everything seems impossible. The lawyer tells Juan to get physical with Leia, although she is only interested in women. The lawyer and his gang may seem strange and even stupid at times, but they are quite prepared for this plan. 
as evidenced by the fact that they know Leah's sexual orientation. That was why it was so necessary for him to take Veil to Spain and now Juan received the next command. He must introduce Veil to Leah at a party after which all of them will take a drug that will bring them closer together. The drugs are prepared for Juan and the plan goes like clockwork as Veil and Leah get physically close to each other. However, the lawyer's plan fails when Juan and Veil break up again and it automatically means Leah won't get to dangle with Veil anymore. Since their arrival in Barcelona, Juan and Veil's relationship has become damaged beyond repair. The main reason is that they are so different from each other. Veil often feels lost and aimless in the city and it doesn't help that her relationship with Juan is far from stable. On the streets of Barcelona, she meets and befriends a homeless man named Jimmy and also his pet dog Hugo. Jimmy and his best pal Veil talk constantly and through these conversations, her true feelings are revealed. Outside the sheltered spaces of academia, Veil faces racism more often than Juan. As a woman, she has to deal with other matters as well, like her older roommate wanting to get intimate with her. So she breaks up with Juan, who is even more distant than before, and finally decides to return to Mexico. But this rift poses a problem for the lawyer. So the lawyer now meets with Juan personally and explains the next part of the plan. The film plays around with the very premise of belief for almost everyone who gets to hear this story actually disbelieves it. It is also because of this very disbelief that the entire plan or the identity of the criminals involved in hijacking Juan's life does not get revealed. When the lawyer meets Juan, he assumes the role of his godfather who has recently visited Barcelona and together they go to Leia's house. Leia Carbonell is the daughter of a very influential and powerful politician in Catalonia named Oriol Carbonell and the lawyer is known to have had a previous relationship with him. The lawyer and Carbonell were on opposite sides with the former possibly working for Carbonell's rival politician. Things become little clearer when Veil finds a video sent by Lorenzo on Juan's laptop. Juan had never seen this video sent by his cousin before his untimely death, which provides context for the film's events. Two years ago, Leah first met Lorenzo in Cancun while in Mexico. Considering the kind of person Lorenzo was, it wasn't surprising that he wanted to get intimate with her and cause trouble in some way. He meets Leah's powerful father and gets into debt for borrowing the lawyer's money from a criminal. Carbonell asked the lawyer to guarantee his daughter's safety in Mexico and that's how the lawyer discovered Lorenzo's relationship with Leah. Now that Lorenzo is dead and the loan he borrowed cannot be repaid, the lawyer makes a careful plan with his cousin Juan, who is going to study in Barcelona. The lawyer's plan, however, seems to be for Veil to form a relationship with Leah and use it to blackmail the politician and infiltrate his company. However, this plan had to be changed as Veil was unavailable, so he pretended to be Juan's godfather and managed to break into Carbonell's house. As silly as it may seem, this may be the lawyer's sole purpose in using Juan to gain access to the politician's home. The lawyer has a deal to discuss with Carbonell, but Juan doesn't hear about it because he isn't involved in the deal. However, the idea of this deal was made possible by the fact that the lawyer and his men had Juan shoot the man right after meeting with Carbonell. The man followed Juan and made him believe he was a private detective hired by the Carbonells to find out more about Leah's new boyfriend. However, the man himself turned out to be a Carbonell. Perhaps this man was some kind of rival of Oriel Carbonell in the family and it would be a great help if the lawyer could kill him. This is where the lawyer came into action with his plan of making Juan commit the murder for which he must have collected a large amount of money from the politician. The money was used to pay Lorenzo's debts to the gang. Juan quickly realizes how he has been tricked and how he and Veil can now be turned over to the lawyer and his gang. He writes an account of all the strange incidents, naming it I don't expect anyone to believe me, which was originally taken from the title of an adult movie he saw as a teenager. Juan gets advice on how to survive in Lorenzo's video as his cousin tells him about a possible rift in the lawyer's gang, as Chucky is probably fed up with his boss and wants to kill him. This is simply Lorenzo's suspicion and he advises his cousin to take advantage of the situation by conspiring with Chucky to kill the lawyer. Juan is so wary of Lorenzo's crazy lifestyle that he decides not to follow his cousin's advice. Instead, he meets with the lawyer and claims that Chucky and Ahmed, another partner in crime, are plotting against him. Juan wants to make a deal with the lawyer to defend himself, but the fact that he still trusts Lorenzo's assumption 
eventually causes him more problems. In fact, there was no significant conflict between the lawyer and Chucky, with the boss encouraging Chucky to kill Juan due to his outrageous complaints and the main character dies in the end. During all this time, Juan had not told Veal anything about the gang or Lorenzo's murder and the woman now finds out about all of it from Lorenzo's video. As she worries about his situation, she discovers Juan's unfinished autobiographical notes on his laptop. Veal edits the part where Juan confesses to killing the detective from the Carbonell family and prints it as a manuscript. She then hands it over to a police officer she knows named Leah as well. She read the entire manuscript and was shocked to learn about the involvement of the police in the case and the extent of the political conspiracy. She decides to investigate the case but finds Veal and the little girl who was with her missing in the streets and one of the lawyer's accomplices lurking around. Therefore, at the end of the film, Juan and Veal are killed by the gang and their bodies are never found. The police officer is also fired when she tries to report the information to her superiors. Her last resort is to convince Juan's mother who has come to Barcelona in search of her son that her son is involved in a large-scale political conspiracy. However, the woman who does not understand her son's hobbies and goals skims over a few pages of the note and refuses to believe that it has anything to do with Juan's disappearance. Frustrated by everyone's denial, Officer Leah throws the notes into a nearby trash can. This is where the homeless man finds the notes at the beginning of the film and having nothing better to do with it, he tears it up. But I have another theory as nothing is clearly shown at the end of the film. My guess is Juan might have conspired with Chucky already before getting to the lawyer and Chucky staged Juan's death but killed his boss in the end. After that, he and Chucky could have started working together and I guess Juan changed entirely after killing the detective and became part of the gang. He kidnapped Veil with the help of one of the lawyer's accomplices as his mother never approved of her and now they can finally stay together without any interruption. If you are a fan of avant-garde style films, this is a film worth your time. But if you are looking for a crime thriller or comedy, you might be disappointed as this movie might feel slow. It is clear that the film wanted to express not only the violence in Mexico but also many political and social issues such as exploitation, toxic relationships, international students issues and the language or accent barrier which the film did well. But as we are not well versed with the culture, it is difficult to understand some context. However, it is technically well made and I genuinely love the tone and mood it sets. This film is not for everyone but for those who love films like Eraserhead or Dogville. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching I Don't Expect Anyone to Believe Me on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off. Adios and I'll be back.